So you know how we've been watching these Outback Jack promos, and we say, man, they he never speaks. They must have, like edited out the uh, sound to put in different music. <laughs> no, Gorilla Outright tells us, believe it or not, Outback Jack is going to speak to us this week. Yeah, but then they must have played some song because yeah. I couldn't hear a goddamn word that guy said. Probably Men at Work or something. Uh, I heard oil. a little bit. Minute oil, yeah. The music was very loud. Uh, it says, the Outback is beautiful with crocs and bugs and ruse. I'm Outback Jack, and there's no worries here, mate. Wow. That's okay. a whole gimmick. SD Jones versus Adrian Adonis. So Adrian is jumping at the, at the bell and is mauling him and mauling him. And Piper comes out to distract him. And compared to what you see these days, this was so refreshing because this made sense. When someone does, does, does a distraction now, their music plays. It's up on the screen. And uh, everyone knows like, it's going to do something. But it, it you know, delays for a while. He jumps up in the apron and whatever. Piper just walks out. And the only way you know it's a home is you see the fans all stand up and point. What the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's just Ronnie Piper. Adrian turns around. And it's not like this is like a, a stadium show, but it's an arena. Adrian looks out, and the lights are really bright. He's like, what the fuck is that thing out? Oh, shit, it's Roddy Piper. They cut to a corner, like, crane shot, where you actually see Adrian looking at S.D. Jones, looking back over his shoulder, looking at S.D. Jones, looking back over his shoulder. And Piper's still, like, 20, 30 yards away. He's not a ringside yet. Piper's just very, like, slowly, one step at a time, making his way down there, but... Every time, repeatedly, Adrian turns his back on S.D. Jones to see what Piper's up to. Even gives S.D. a near fall at one point. And finally, he's so pissed. That's actually a key. Yes. Nowadays, that's just a finish. Yeah. You get distracted, mm-hmm. this other jobber rolls you up and pins you, and you're real mad or whatever. Yeah. Now, he tried to cradle Nate and just kicked out and kicked this fucker in the face. He kicked him in the face and tossed him out of the ring. Threw him outside. But in the process, he turned his back to Roddy Piper. That's when Piper attacks. They're having this wild-ass brawl to DQ right away. What a fucking baby face. <laughs> This fucking guy snuck in and waited till the heel's back was turned and then jumped him from behind after being scared of a snake. This is an anti-hero. Yes. This is not a baby face. But uh, the locker room empties to separate this uh, this uh, brawl. It's not just geeks. The U.S. Express were out there. She can vote. The fucking locker there. room. Like 15 yeah. grown men ran down to the ring to break this up. On all sorts of supplements. Yeah. yeah. Steroids. And, <laughs> and I don't know what happened to Butch Reed. He must have missed his cue, but like... A full 45 seconds later, he finally hits the ring, and like everything had been broken up. So he's either he didn't want to get his hit. time cue, or he was really, really smart. Yeah, let these other fuckers get beat up. Hi, I'm Tito Santana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Mexico, but I feel right at home in the USA. I love to read, and when I'm not in the ring, you can find me in the library. Visit your local library. You'll feel right at home, too. Wow. Nice job, man. That's the whole thing. You know, it's funny. Sometimes you watch these, and, you know, this guy is saying, Hey, kids, he's all coked up. Just say no to fucking drugs, (laughs) you little shits. But then we got this one. It's like, I believe when he's not wrestling, he's at the fucking library. Yeah. He had to be a teacher. He loves to read. So good for him. I liked it. Jesse Ventura that interviews the Can-Am Connection. Every time they come out, he says, the girls all scream and faint. I understand why. You impressed me in the ring. You got great bodies, all nice and tan. But do you think you have arms as big as mine? Or tells, they're standing there shirtless, right? <laughs> Jesse flexes his arm, and Martel looks at him and says, yeah, yeah, I do. Doesn't flex back. Nah. Just trust me. And Jesse says, well, what about this? my shoulders? You got this, this deltoid, whatever the hell he called this it. This rear delt. Yeah, yeah, you got this. And Zig says, oh, yeah, I got those. I got those. And Jesse says, well, do you got a pretty face like me? And they say, <laughs> and they leave. And uh, you're, you're, you're skipping over the best part again. Jesse is trying to fuck with them. And the baby faces, they one-up him once. They one-up him twice. And then he goes for the big one. Well, what about my pretty face? And they go, ha, ha, ha. And he is so fucking pissed. He goes, ah, and he storms off the set he's so gotten to. That is a great heel. He was not there to one up these baby faces. He was not there to be cooler. He was there to be Jesse the Body with smaller arms, smaller rear delts, and an uglier face. And get mad about it. And off he goes. I liked it. The segment was oddly shot. You mentioned they were shirtless. 
<laughs> but you're looking at them and they're not, you can't see their trunks. You can only see mm-hmm. them from like the belly button up. They could be nude. So they could be nude. <laughs> yes. The other I thing I noticed yeah. was Tom Zank had his hand on his waist, yes. but his arm was out of frame as well. So all you saw was this hand on his waist. So it looked like Martel had his hand around his waist. Oh, right. And they're both naked. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, they're very They're close. going together. Yeah. Yeah, they're going together here. Sika versus Bob Boyer. I swear to God, Bob's 10 years older than the last time we saw him. I think he's 70 now. I think he retires in 87. He fucked up one spot. Sika says, fuck this. Yeah. He grabs him and plants him in a Samoan drop. I do love these old matches where like one guy fucks. He goes to hit the you ropes. Go, you get he, one strike. He goes to hit the ropes and he runs the wrong fucking way. Yeah. Like he's supposed to run straight, but for some reason he veers off. And, uh, and Sika just gets a hold of this fucker and he kills him. And that's it. It's done. And it was fine. I uh, I I was distracted and I had to do a double take because I thought Grandpa Munster was on this, my screen for a moment. He is old. <laughs> Here is Hulk Hogan's promo on Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat. Ah, he of course has his hands full fighting for the World Heavyweight Title night and day, <laughs> but he would put that title aside just one time to get his twenty-four inch pythons around Savage's neck. Ken Resnick then interviews the wizard Sika and Kamala. <laughs> now, on the way here... Well, hold on. First, got to say this. Craig, do you remember when you were talking about that uh, match earlier where you called your family into the, uh, the room and they uh, watched it and you all I, laughed and everything? I do. Okay, the key to that story is you called them into the room. Correct. I was in not another room. The door was open. I see. But Paisley was in this room... And Whitney and Hanalei were reading a book over there, and I was over here watching this. Sure. And I watched it once, and I was just fucking dying. <laughs> and so I decided I got to watch it again. Right. And so as I'm watching it the second time, I hear the patter of footsteps. And then next thing I know, Hanalei is looking over my shoulder. Hmm. And then I hear more footsteps, and now my wife is looking over my shoulder. And uh, and they were transfixed by this fucking interview. Yeah. This this everyone. If you want to know, like if fucking aliens came to this earth, <laughs> and they were like, "What is this pro wrestling?" Well, this is the fucking clip you show them. Sure. This is there is nothing else on this earth, like what I watched in this fucking segment. It was, it was, theater. It was tragedy. It was everything. Every fucking good and bad thing about pro wrestling. All wrapped up in one fucking preposterous promo. So we're driving down here, and uh, Sean wants to make sure that I've written down what the wizard said. I got, I got most of it. Not did you? All. I did. Now he, I, th- I believe that uh, his goal here is that I will be the wizard and uh, Sean wants to play the part of Kamala. God. And, okay. And uh, Craig, you, you could be Sika because Sika was quiet the entire time. Right. That's, that's good. I so, that. so was, Wizard's got this tusk or tooth that he keeps on a, a, a rope around his it's neck. It's the tooth. It's, yes. The, the tooth. And Ken Resnick simply asks, "What's in the tooth?" And the wizard begins, "It is magic." It is magic that the Grand Wizard himself delivered into my hands to help control and guide the two toughest men in the world today. Oh! These men have uncontrollable habits, eating habits, oh! personal habits. They are Neanderthal throwbacks. They are Neanderthal throwbacks is what he said. Yes. They will drive this deep into the skull of Hulk Hogan. To get to the nerve points. When he's paralyzed, one of these men will rewrite the pages of wrestling history. That's it. Fade to black. Go to commercial. I laughed so much every time Kamala made a noise. He wailed. You know what's amazing is this is the goddamn Dungeon of Doom. It really is. This guy well, is two been, of them literally. This guy chases Hogan for nine more years. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he must get this man. And fuck. The funniest fucking thing is when he's screaming about uh they what what's the Neanderthal line? Uh these men are throwback Neanderthals. These men are throwback Neanderthals. They And there's a long fucking pause. He's trying to think about what the fuck am I gonna say next? 
are from the 33rd degree. <laughs> the fuck? What in the fuck are you talking about? And he just went on and on about this goddamn tusk. And he it's like the Undertaker's fucking urn. He holds it up and they're both, they stare at it. Oh, they're, that tooth. Like the tooth controls Neanderthals. That's the story. Also in the very beginning when they're just getting set, um, the wizard is like, uh, Kamala, get over here! Ken, get out of the way! Kim Chi, move forward! Actually, you're close. You're close. <laughs> He's screaming like a maniac. And then he goes, he goes, Kim Chi! Ken Resnick, please. And he gently <laughs> takes the microphone. I must correct you. Kenneth. Kenneth. He always calls him Kenneth. Kenneth, please. <laughs> and he gently grabs a microphone and gently hustles him off. And then he goes, come on! He goes back crazy again. This guy's the greatest. Gold. <sighs> Incredible. And I like I like how Sika is transfixed on the tooth and Kamala yes. seems to be scared of it. Well, they're hungry. <laughs> I see. So next week, the average. Yeah, that was the main event. That was the main event. Yeah. Oh, it sure was. That, that was the that. main event. Yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, you know, Phoenix versus Isaiah Cassidy. We had the wizard. Wow. Roman Reigns Sr. And a Ugandan headhunter doing a promo for our main event. So advertised for next week, the Honky Tonk Man and Hercules Hernandez in action, a Ricky Steamboat follow-up, and most exciting... The music of Miami Sound Machine. That's what they said. We'll see how that goes. Well, this will be a shorter show next week. <laughs> we'll get three minutes off the, chopped off in time there. Yes, yes. The rhythm is going to get you. That's right. That's right. Plus a whole lot more. And then we close. I can't handle much more than 45 minutes. <laughs> we close the special musical review. Always a treat. Always a treat.